Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. Reason arms! Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Welcome to the Wayne Westland Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony of 2023. My name is Patrick Herity, and I'm your Master of Ceremony. I want to welcome some dignitaries in the office. Uh, in the, whew, office. And with us today, from the city of Westland, we have Mike, Mayor Michael P. Londo. We have Council President James Hart in the Rifle Squad. Council Pro Tem. Andrea Rakowski, we have Councilwoman Melissa Sampi, we have Councilman Delano Hornbuckle, we have Councilman Mike McDermott, oh, I see him. there he is, Councilman James uh, Godbout. From the city of Wayne, we have Mayor John Racy, we have Councilman Kevin Dowd, we have Councilman Alfred Brock. We have Councilman Eric Clearman. From the Wayne County Commission's Office, Commissioner Glenn Anderson. There he is. We have Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. Is there any other dignitaries that I forgot to mention? Please stand and be recognized. I pop. School board member Melanie Hines. Do not say happy Memorial Day. It's not happy. This day has devolved into National Barbecue Day, Beach Day, Mattress Sale, Go Up North Day. Why? We're here to honor those who gave their lives so we can live ours free. If you leave here with one thing, it's this. What we do today has a price and others paid for, paid for it for us. Delivering the invocation is Ch uh, VFW 9885 Chaplain Daryl Austin. Roger that. We're here to honor the fallen we're here to honor the heroes where we carry their names on our wrist, but more importantly, we carry their names in our hearts. Men and women, men like Timothy Hayden, a close and dear friend of mine and my wife's, that I can't help but think about over and over today to echo the words of my good friend, Pat Harity. Some of this day is not happy for me. We're here to honor those who lost their lives on the battlefield, at sea and in the air, the veterans who succumb to the wounds of war at home in VA hospitals or in their beds or, God forbid, a parking lot. 
We're here to honor the missing and the POW, those that are captive. This is their day, not ours. The glorious dead. The Bible says greater love has no one than those who lay down their lives for their friends. That is who we are here to honor, and we will honor them. Let us pray. Father God, I come before you humbly yet boldly in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, with all of these people gathered and unified, and at least two of us are here, so I know you are here with me. We are here to teach our children and the generations after us that freedom comes with the cost. But I pray that as we count that cost as a nation and as neighbors, we remember to act in love and in selfless service because the only way I can honor those heroes and the only way that these families can do so is by loving their neighbor. Lord God, I pray that you would go before the ceremony today and prepare the words and the way for every speaker, for every person here, and as they come back to our VFW, that we would be unified in love and treat each other with dignity and respect. I give this day once again to you in your name. Amen. Our first of our guest speakers is the Honorable Mayor John Racy from the City of Wayne. Good afternoon, everybody. Our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier who died protecting it. And that quote is unknown. I want to thank uh, the city of Westland, Mayor Londo, the veterans, Vic Vera, the committee, everyone that participated in making this, this event happen today. We, we, it takes a village to make things happen like this, to, to honor those who have fallen. And we appreciate everybody that came out today. I had a message that I wanted to share today, but I'm going to kind of go off script a little bit. Um, last year, I lost both my father-in-law and my father, February 1st and February 3rd. Both were veterans. My, my father-in-law was service-connected. My dad wasn't. I guess, first off, any veterans out here, could you guys stand? I want to just recognize the veterans here. They're out here. <laughs> Thank you for your service. The, what I have to say is to you, to you today. So my father-in-law was service-connected. My father wasn't. My dad fought and everybody in his battalion got killed and he didn't he never wanted to talk about these stories and uh, so he never felt that he should get service connected because there were so many other people that needed it but I want to tell you guys if you're not service connected you need to do it now don't wait till you get sick we could have used that help from the VA. And it's something that veterans, I think there's a lot of veterans that don't feel they deserve it. You deserve it. You fought, you served your country. You need to get service connected. Everybody in this community cares about our veterans, I believe. And it's very important that you take, to take the benefits that are, are uh, afforded you. You earn those beyond a measure. We can never repay. It's just a small token of being able to give you guys that, that we're able to do that. But those, those um, benefits would have made a huge difference for my family. And I think it would have helped you guys for sure. As we honor their memory today, let us pledge that their lives were sacrifices, their valor will be justified, and remember for as long as God gives, 
life to this nation, Ronald Reagan. Is it, it is up to us to use the gifts secured by those who made the ultimate sacrifice to do as much as good as possible and to honor the debt that can never be repaid. Let's carry their sacrifice with us in our hearts and strive to honor their memory by being good and faithful, hopeful and strong, and committed to building a brighter future for all. God bless you. God bless the greatest nation on earth. Good day. Thank you, Mayor Racy. Our next speaker, and taking in a, the place of our honored speaker, is the Honorable Mayor Michael P. Londo. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what a beautiful day in the city of Westland to honor the brave men and women that courageously gave all in the service of our country while defending the freedoms that we all cherish. I want to thank everybody that's coming that came out today and and support and appreciation of our veterans. Thank you to everyone who made this day possible. Uh, Vic Barra and his team, um, the Veterans Committee that, that puts this event on every year. Uh, the grounds look incredible, so I really appreciate that. The parade route looks tremendous, so I want to thank our Department of Public Service and all those who helped uh, get the parade route ready. While many see today as the official kickoff to summer, it's so much more than that. Today is about honoring those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Today is about remembering those who left family and families and friends to do a job and never return home. Today, we have many veterans with us today that answered the call and I would like to personally thank you for your service. It's also encouraging to see so many young people here today. Uh, it's important for them to recognize what our veterans gave for us and to share with the next generation so they are never forgotten. This weekend across the country, there will be gatherings at memorials and cemeteries. There will be parades in the largest and smallest of cities to honor our fallen brave men and women. Please take a moment of your time to reflect on the freedoms you have gained from the service of our veterans. I want to thank you for inviting me to participate in a special event, and may we never forget those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Those are my comments. Um, I am going to speak on behalf of um, United States Marine Corps Major Craig Stegelman, retired. He had major hip surgery recently and unfortunately, regrettably, was unable to attend today. Um, he asked that I do step in and, and share his solemn messages on this holiday. Things that I've learned to do, learned not to do on Memorial Day. Don't wish anyone a happy Memorial Day. Remember this. It is a solemn holiday to honor America's fallen in combat. Don't thank the current troops. Don't disregard its importance. Don't let politics keep you from rendering respect. Things I've learned to do on Memorial Day. Attend a Memorial Day event, much like today. Plan a family barbecue to commem commemorate Memorial Day. Decorate a grave site or your home for Memorial Day. Volunteer in your community. Send a Memorial Day care package. Since the Civil War, we have honored our fallen heroes by reverently reflecting on their service and ultimate sacrifices in battle. Originally known as Decoration Day, Memorial Day became an official federal holiday in 1971, and it is observed annually on the last Monday in May. Unofficially marking the beginning of the summer season, the parades, ceremonies, and the patriotic decorations at our family gatherings are all outward signs of our deepest respect and admiration for those fallen heroes and the grieving families they left behind. I am truly honored to be here at the beautiful Westland Veterans Memorial Garden as we pause to take stock of the magnificent freedoms we were able to enjoy thanks to the patriots who gave their lives preserving this great union in places like Gettysburg, Shiloh, and Bull Run. We pay tribute to the courageous, or excuse me, to the courage and selfishness of those who lost their, pardon me, who lost their lives battling in the trenches of World War I throughout Europe and in the farthest reaches of the Pacific during World War II. One can only imagine what the world would look like today if these brave men and women in uniform had not fought with such courage during World War II to stop that evil tyranny from happening, from spreading, excuse me. We also honor those who gave everything in the frozen battlefields of Korea and then the arid jungles of Vietnam. 
we solemnly remember more than 7,000 of our young fighting men and women whose lives were tragically cut short in Iraq and Afghanistan. And today we pause and solemnly reflect on their courage and sacrifices. As we honor the fallen, we also pay homage to those families who lost loved ones in service to the nation, for they continue to feel the full weight of that sacrifice every single day. The pain of your loss may lessen over time, but it never goes away. We are forever reminded of their sacrifice, whether it be the empty chair at the dinner table, old photographs, or the incredible likeness of that lost service member's son or daughter that serves as a constant reminder of that void in our lives. The heartache of these tragic losses and the painful memories endure a lifetime. Memorial Day is also a time to reaffirm our own commitment to selfless service. In doing so, we not only honor the memory of those lost in battle, but also vow to carry on that le legacy of excellence and selfless service to the nation. However you choose to spend this holiday, I hope you have a safe and meaningful Memorial Day weekend with your friends and family. And again, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to join you in honoring America's greatest heroes during this solemn holiday. May we never forget those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Londo. And my speech is somewhere in here. Okay. There we go. I found my speech. You got it? John sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Paying the price for freedom. Nice parade, huh? Beautiful. It's great to walk down an American street without problems. That's not the case elsewhere in the world. It wasn't always the case here as well. We fought to be independent from a country a few thousand miles away from an, across an ocean. It's strange that they're our closest ally now, but early Americans simply wanted to be free. They fought. They died. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe against an enemy which had much more success at warfare and prevailed. We fought the same enemy again a few decades later. They burned our fledgling capital to the ground, but still, they prevailed in the name of freedom. Our country was torn apart from itself. Family fought family, state fought state, American fought American, but still the cost was freedom. The new century brought a new kind of warfare, country against country. We tried to keep out of it, but when enough was enough, Americans answered the call to keep our country safe. Yet another world war. This one had much more at stake, in my opinion. When our country was attacked, a sleeping giant was awakened. Much is said about the response to Pearl Harbor, how the country came together. Industry was a beast trying to pump out as much as can be had for the war effort. Millions of Americans contributed so we can remain free here at home. To stop the spread of communism in Asia, more Americans gave their lives in Korea. Some might ask, why were we there? But they went anyway. Better fight them there than here. We can walk freely on our streets today because of that. Another Southeast Asian conflict had us deploying. A slow burning conflict turned into a war, turned into a draft, into full scale warfare. Americans had many opinions on Vietnam, but the fact remains that Americans gave their lives so we can walk freely here at home. In Beirut, Americans were killed trying to keep us free from terrorism. In Mogadishu, when we see and read about the events surrounding Operation Gothic Serpent, it's hard to fathom the courage others had to face in facing terrifying combat, terrifying and brutal combat. In the first Gulf War, we went to protect our interests. Whether you agree about the reasoning for Gulf War, we still walk free to this day 
and owe them a debt of gratitude. 9-11, we all remember that day. We got attacked on American soil. We had to defend our homeland and not allow any Americans feel that way again. This began the global war on terrorism. Afghanistan and Iraq get a big mention, but Americans sacrificed in many places around the globe, some places which we might not even know about. The whole point about this holiday is simple. Most Americans think this is National Barbecue Day or Beach Day or whatever. I used to get upset at that thinking. I still do to a certain extent. According to Military.com on an article yesterday, it is estimated that since the Revolutionary War, 646,596 American troops have died in battle and more than 539,000 died from other non-combat related causes. Thing is, all the Americans who gave their lives before us allow us to live our lives free. They gave their last breath so we can enjoy our lives. My challenge to this crowd, actually all Americans, is to live our lives worthy of that sacrifice. We live in a way that honors them. They gave the rest of their remaining days for us. It's the least we can do for them. <sighs> now we're going to have the cere uh, ceremonial presentation of the wreaths. Presenting on behalf of VFW Post 9885 BOVA is Commander Mike Rakita. Presenting on behalf of VFW Post 9885 Auxiliary is Ardell Rice. Presenting the wreath on behalf of Vietnam Veterans of America is Dan Stachow. Presenting on behalf of American Legion Post 251 is Commander Dan Valdez, Senior Vice Commander Eric Fisher, and Adjutant Ron Nichols. Next, we have Veterans Haven, Judy Bur 
Judy Berna and Vern Amos. I guess my list was wrong. Are there any other wreaths that I failed to mention? That's the one. We have Norway Community Citizens, Citizens Council. It was on my list, I just... Far from perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise while we have the ceremonial lowering of the flag to half mast. Please remain standing as there will be ceremonial rifle fire followed by the, pl uh, the playing of taps by John Glenn High, High School Trumpet. Ladies and gentlemen, you may see. This concludes the ceremonial portion. I'd like to thank Vic Barra. Do everything for the city of Westland. Uh, he's a bit of a bulldog, but I can't have a better right-hand man. Everyone who participated and watch the parade and ceremonial. Thank you. Um, this doesn't happen without you. Anyone who had anything to do with this ceremonial ceremony, thank you. <laughs>